Hey friend, Brandon here. And for this video, we're gonna check out the brand new Apple AirPods Max. And as an audio engineer, I like to go a little extra. So we're gonna bring out the ears. So in this video, you'll be able to hear what it sounds like. Let's talk about it because this is Tech Day and let's listen to it because this is Sound Theory. All right, so this box is uh, actually pretty big. There they are. And then, so you have some instructions. I would assume an Apple sticker, maybe not. I'm actually not too upset about that. I never really use the Apple stickers unless I'm making it a meme. And then in here you have a USB-C to lightning cable connector cable. Uh, why couldn't you just use USB-C for everything? So apparently you can plug it in for five minutes and then you get one and a half hours of charge time. It's 20 hours of battery life at full charge. That's below other types of wireless Bluetooth headphones with active noise canceling, but it's still pretty good. I don't know how often I'd use it for more than 20 hours straight. But of course, it's always nice to have more battery life. There's uh, some sort of wrapping around it. I don't know how to take this off elegantly. Hmm. Usually I expect premium from Apple, but this kind of feels a little cheap and flimsy in a weird way. It has a soft touch to it, so that part's kind of nice, but otherwise it's kind of weird. And then it's not covered on the bottom as well, so you're probably gonna scratch up things. It doesn't line up with the USB-C port. What, how does Apple, <laughs> how did Apple pass this? I don't understand. There are some magnets in there, so that's nice. Sometimes lines up. I, I wanna be able to flip it over and hear a satisfying there's no satisfying click, not like this. Apparently you do have to put it in this in order to go to low power mode. Otherwise it's just gonna drain your battery if it's out in the open. I imagine Apple is gonna hear all the feedback and want to release a better, more robust case for this. And it's probably gonna be expensive, right? If it was able to fold up a little bit better, I would like it in a case like this. This is the Sony WH-1000XM3s or the M4s, same case. It's nice, it's got a little bit of a hard shell case there. Yeah, a little pouch there and stuff and just folds up in there. You have everything you need. This feels way more premium than this floppy thing. I just, over here we have some cardboard coverings there. So the first thing that I'm thinking of at $550 before tax is the build quality. It's interesting, this seems like this would be in the most fragile part right here. Uh, like if it caught on something, it would rip and then your case doesn't cover it up. So that doesn't make any sense to me. It looks comfortable and airy and nice, but I mean, how durable is it? That's the part that you can't replace. The thing that you can replace are actually these ear cups here, which apparently these do use magnets. So this might be the satisfying click I was hoping for. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I like that. So there's a nice little embossing of the L and then the R. The one thing that's kind of shocking for a lot of people is the fact that this costs $69 to replace the ear cups. 69, nice. No, not nice. In comparison, the Biodynamics DT770 Pros that I have here, it can go from about like 15 to $40 for a replacement. And then the Audio-Technica ATH-M50s, it's about $25 for a replacement, but this is a, a little bit more of a cheaper material that has that faux leather kind of material going on there. So when we're thinking about build quality, we have to talk about the difference in prices. So $550, the Biodynamics DT770 Pros is about $130, but $170 at normal price. And then the Audio-Technica ATH M50s cost about $150. Obviously headphones can get way more expensive and the ones that I really want are from Focal and they cost about $1,500. So let's check out a little bit more of the build quality and kind of features that they have here. One thing I'm noticing is this really delightful spring feature right there. Oh, that's actually really nice. There's a little pivot right there. So it's actually not moving at this ball joint right here. It's moving at a ball joint right inside here, which is actually pretty neat. And up top, you also see the digital crown that's kind of like an Apple Watch. It's also a button. And then you have a dedicated ANC button. Unfortunately, you don't have a power button, which is stupid. And you have to put it in this flipping case. <laughs> You also have a bunch of different cutouts here. I'm assuming these are microphones for the active noise canceling right there. And down here, it looks like you have two different microphones to pick up your voice, a lightning port cable, not USB-C, dang it. And then uh, some additional ports there that I am assuming is for more active noise canceling. These look like they are probably more robust in terms of resisting certain kinds of sweats, but it's still probably gonna get dirty. In order to pair it, I think I just open this up and then pull it out, right? No, tap that. Do you tap 
this? Do I just put it on my head? Whoa, okay, wow. Uh, the active noise canceling is already on. One thing I will say though, is that the transparency mode is really dang good. It feels quite natural and I appreciate that. The active noise canceling is back on. I can just hear the resonance in my nose, but I do feel a little bit of that pressure on my ear. So that's uh, an interesting thing to take note of. Why am I not connected though? to these Bluetooth headphones. Supposedly it's supposed to just work, but it's not right now. You know, if I had like a power button or something that was reliably indicating whether or not I have it open or not, or I'm using it, that would make this process easier because I don't know what it's looking for. There it is. Okay, I had to manually choose it in this case. Let's listen to this. Let me put this on you, on this microphone. That way you can hear the difference between active noise canceling, completely off, and then transparency mode. Make sure you use your own headphones. It might make it a little bit easier. So we have different modes right now. So we're in the transparency mode, which is actually really good sounding. What you're hearing right now is me behind the headphones right now, not right next to the microphone. So this is what transparency mode sounds like up close. But let's move it to off so you can just hear it passively what the noise cancellation sounds like just because you have ear cups on. We're going to that now. So this is what it sounds like without active noise canceling on. Everything is off, transparency is off, active noise canceling is off, everything's off. We're back at transparency mode. Now let's go to active noise canceling. So this is what active noise canceling sounds like on the headphones. Does it sound better if I'm closer? Anything? Does it change at all when I'm far away or anything? Can you hear anything? What do you think? Now we're back on transparency mode. What do you think about the active noise canceling? Leave some uh, comments down below. So I think you can turn it up and down here. So turning counterclockwise actually turns it up in volume and turn it clockwise goes down in volume. That's actually the opposite direction that I was instinctively trying to use, especially when it's on your right side. I don't know, maybe that's just me. And this is what the microphone sounds like on the Apple AirPods Pro Max. What do you think about the sound quality? Go ahead and leave a comment down below. And I really hope you enjoy the ear microphone that I purchased to help provide better reviews for all of you. Okay, let's uh, listen to some music. I'm gonna kind of listen to a bunch of different tracks that I can't play in a YouTube video for copyright reasons, but we'll play some other songs on this microphone right here so you can listen to it. But uh, first, do you hear that? That's me wanting to give each and every single one of you $20. Yes, it's true. And that's because of this video's sponsor, Public. I love Public because it merges a free stock trading platform with social media. Tony Hawk is on there, Shaq's on there. You can see what kind of things that they're investing in. Public is really great because everyone's so helpful and you can learn a lot. You can get started and get $20 for free by clicking the link down below in the description and start trading for as little as $1. You don't have to buy a whole entire share. It's awesome. Thanks so much to Public for sponsoring this video. Now, something you may not know about headphones and just speakers in general is that you do need to break them in. So when we start doing comparisons with the other headphones, I'm gonna make sure that all of those headphones have been broken in, including these. That means I just need to play some music through it for maybe like 20 hours or something like that. And then it, it kind of loosens up all the drivers and the speakers because there's only one 40 millimeter driver in here. But once it does that, it kind of just opens things up a little bit more. So for things like reverbs and the, the stereo spread and everything, it feels quite wide and immersive. Okay, let's listen to some music. I'll listen to this one song to kind of hear a little bit of that and listen to the snare on this particular track because it's quite forward. And that's kind of similar to how vocals are treated on these headphones. Now here's something that's really interesting that I'm noticing right off the bat is the sound quality differs quite significantly between that 75% range and all the way up. Once you crank it up all the way, which is actually really bad for your ears, it actually really opens up the audio. Like the high end becomes way more clear and airy. So like there's no harshness going on here. What's happening in the mid range and below is it's more of that mellow sound. It's kind of more of like a, a kind of warm sound to it. But once you crank it up all the way, it does feel like you've kind of taken the blanket off of it a little bit. You know, hear how the hi-hat there and the clarity or sharpness of her voice just comes out a little bit more at a higher volume.
Now, if you wanna check out the songs that I use for my audio test, there's a link down below in the description below that sign up link for public. Now, here's another really cool song for the stereo spread. It's just really immersive. One thing I'm noticing is when it's on the ears right here, I can hear the music from outside. It is not fully containing the audio, but once again, I have it cranked up all the way. Now for this track, let's listen to the low end. One thing to keep in mind is it is able to produce really good sub frequencies, like something you'd hear in Daft Punk Solar Sailor or doing it right. Those are really good tests that I like to use. Those low sub frequencies are there, but any sort of thing that has some punchiness to it, so like a kick drum or something that you would expect in a lot of hip hop or especially metal you won't really feel it here it feels like it's lacking some of that energy And this song is a really good blend of really low end and some of that high end clarity or forwardness in the mix. Now because of copyright, I can't play Daft Punk's Doing It Right or Solar Sailor, so this song will have to do. It does have a really substantial low note or sub frequency, and it really comes through quite well on these headphones. Now, for those of you who have the Audio Technica ATH M50s, we're going to compare the two. A lot of people know what these sound like, so that's a good comparison. Now, despite it not being really punchy, it's not muddy, so that's actually a really good thing. They really focus on that mid-range forwardness and the clarity. Some of the other head types of headphones or earbuds that you may listen to may have really substantial low end to it, but it's a flubby, muddy mess, and I'd rather have this over that. But as a whole, when I'm listening to this, I think there are other headphones that I can wear that I just enjoy using way more. And that's probably because I really enjoy punchiness in a mix. I really enjoy listening to metal. There's a lot of energy that's there. This seems like it's more focused on things that you would have for like maybe like pop or classical music or acoustic music. Something that is more pleasing and ambient in terms of its style and less in terms of its energy and, and kind of just kind of getting you pumped up. I just really need that that kick drum to kind of punch me in the face. <laughs> I like music like that. Unfortunately though, you don't have the ability to adjust the EQ on this, which is kind of a bummer, but that's an Apple thing, I guess. So I probably won't keep these in the long run, but we'll still compare it with some of the other types of headphones that are out there. So that'll be the Sony WH-1000X M4s and the Panda THX drop headphones that are just sent out to me. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when I post those videos. As a whole, what do you think about the sound quality? What kind of music are you looking for? Do you think that this is a good fit for what you're looking for? Do you need something that's a little bit more punchy and maybe aggressive in the mix? Or do you prefer more calm, chill types of music? If I $150, it is more expensive than traditional standard types of headphones that you would find in recording studio. To be fair, these are more about tracking audio rather than mixing it. Maybe I will be able to get my hands on some of those Focal headphones, which can be used for mixing. If that's the case, we'll see how well these AirPods Max live up to $1,500 studio grade professional mixing headphones. That's a very interesting thing to me. Maybe I can ask my friend Caleb, who's a professional audio engineer that helped review the AirPods Pro with me if he will let me borrow them, or maybe you can come and visit and give his impressions on these headphones with me. Anyways, if you'd like to purchase the AirPods Max, the Pros, or any of the headphones, or anything like that, there are links down below in the description. They are affiliate links. They do help support the channel. And if I happen to find a case that's not a piece of heart trash, you'll find it there too. And don't forget to click that link for public down below in the description to get your $20 for free and your stock trading for free. And then go follow me. Thank you so much for watching. This is Tech Today, where we talk about the intersection of technology in our everyday lives, in business, and in all things creative. Until next time.